this is the C uh, model 200 CBX combination spinner and hot plate station. Um, manufactured by Brewer Scientific. Uh, it is a convenient station that is uh, clean room suitable. Uh, before we operate it, let's take a look at the connections on the back. Power is a 120 volt, uh, 15 amp supply, along with a nitrogen purge line, uh, typically 70 psi pressure, and vacuum 25 inches of mercury. Then there is also an exhaust. Now this exhaust also is metered by the software, so it allows you to open and close the damper as per your application. This of course is where you'd connect your hose for your exhaust uh, outside of the clean room or the lab. The system is a Windows driven system with a touch screen. Uh, it's very simple to use. It allows you to, to program uh, processes and recipes for both spin and for thermal, which is basically the hot plate. To demonstrate the speed range of the spinner, I'm going to use the small chuck with a timing mark on it. Now it's important to note that this screw is very important that holds the chuck in place. Because as you can see, there is a hole drilled right through the middle of it. That's to allow the vacuum access to the top of the chuck and the bottom of the wafer. There's a pin here that aligns the chuck. You shouldn't over torque this, but you shouldn't have any wobble either, so it's important to just tighten that down good and snug, and snug is fine. Now, for purposes of our little demonstration, I'm going to plug the vacuum right here so it senses that there's a wafer on there and we can see our timing mark. Now in this first demonstration, I'm going to ramp up the uh, chuck from zero up to the maximum that the machine allows, which is 12,000 RPM, and ramp back down again. First, hold on the chuck. Another important safety feature, it will not operate if the lid is lifted up. So that's important to remember. Okay, first. Okay, and start process now. In this next demonstration, we're going to yes. Hold on a second. going to do 
is we're going to run the chuck uh, with about a 20 second ramp up to 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 and back down again. Set our timing light for approximately 2,000 right here to start with. And here we go. And here we go. There's 2,000. Four thousand. And six Now in our next part of the generate, uh, demonstration, we're going to put on the 4 inch chuck as the same slot and pin type of arrangement. And this time I'm going to use one of my timing wafers. Hold vacuum. Now here I'm just going to accelerate up to 6,000 RPM and then accelerate back down again. And here we go. Now I'll demonstrate how the spinner and the hot plate work together. Both operate off the same controller and switching between one section and the other is as simple as pushing a couple of keys.
first will place away from the chuck. Hold it down. Close. Now, this is just a small simulated short version of a, a normal process. So, first we'll spin the wafer at a modest 750 RPM for 30 seconds. Once it returns to OK, that means that the first part of the process is over. Then what we would do is transfer the wafer. Now, you'll notice that the pins here are the lift pins above the hot plate. Normally, you would close the lid during this part of the pro timed process. But for purposes of our demonstration, we're going to leave it open. Okay. We preset the temperature of the hot plate to 180 degrees C. And I've written this one uh, bake program. So at first it will lower the wafer to 0.2 inches above the hot plate. This allows it to preheat the bottom of the wafer. It'll then lower it to the hot plate, but still loose on the hot plate, to allow the heat to start to work its way in. And then it'll turn the vacuum on, as you see I can't move it, to complete the bake process. Lift it back up to 0.2 inches allowing a little bit of cool, natural cooling to take place. And the process is done once it's raised up. And you can remove your wafer.